Alright, here we go. We got a real game here with uh, Mr. Martin Stromgald. Um, I'm just going to jump right into it. My three opponents here are all tough. We've got Momer, Riku, and Damia. Each of them is playing blue. Uh, Momer obviously likes to tutor up stuff, counter, and take extra turns when necessary. Riku is ramp and fat stuff. Damia can be a whole bunch of different strategies. And then there's little old me with my mono red 1-1 one -one guy. <coughs> My uh, opening hand is pretty decent just because it's got three lands, a sack outlet in the Goblin Bombardment, and uh, a little bit of graveyard hate with Relic of Progenitus, and some destruction with Oxida Scrap Monster. So I go ahead and keep. I believe Damia won the roll. We'll find out here. Yes, she does. Uh, I draw Zealous Conscripts. It's not horrible. Not a whole... oh, never mind. Momer has the first turn soul ring. I forgot about that. Which means that uh, he's going to have the leg up on a lot of people. Uh, Lightning Greams from Damia. Lightning Greams is something I drew. And it looks like Momer is going to draw a card from Wall of Blossoms. That's not horrible. I think I'm just going to use the Scrap Meltzer when I can to blow up the soul ring. Get the Lightning Greaves out there. And Momer uses Kodama's Reach to ramp a little bit. Good for him. Riku plays Mystifying Maze and cultivates, so he can ramp as well. It looks like Damia is a little mana screwed right here. She she misses her fourth land drop, doesn't play anything, and uh, that's going to have a little bit of an effect on who I consider as the top uh, threats. Essentially what I'm going to do is kind of spread things out between Momer and Riku, Taking out the Soul Ring here, uh, equipping the Scrap Melter, and hitting Riku for three. And I'm going to leave Damia alone for a little bit. Momer comes out to play. Riku plays his Commander. Uh, Damia misses another land drop. So, okay, you know what? I figure uh, I might as well put the pressure on the two guys that are actually hitting their land drops and have, the, have their Commanders out. Leave Damia alone again. Uh, unfortunately, at this point, I'm I'm kind of starting to like run out of steam a little bit. I still have Zealous Conscripts in hand, but what I'm thinking about is um, using Relic of Progenitus just to cycle. Uh, I don't really feel like casting Martin at this point is going to be very beneficial, but you never know. Let's see what happens. I go ahead and spread out the damage a little bit. That's when Momer plays Seedborn Muse, and then he searches up to Fairy to put on top of his uh, library. It's a classic Momer play. It's overdone, and a lot of Momer players do it. A bunch of them don't. I mean, I guess it really depends on their hand. I don't know. I, it's just kind of tired, I guess. And I, I understand why people do it, because it's a powerful play. Um... But there's always better stuff to search up, guys. I mean, come on. So, obviously, I'm going to set my sights on Momer. Luckily, I have Zealous Conscripts, and I hope that if uh, he doesn't have a counterspell, I'll be able to play the Conscripts, steal the Seedborn Muse, and then sacrifice her to Goblin Bombardment. Teferi's on top of his library. I don't mind Teferi too much. I just don't like the fact that Momer gets to untap all the time, <laughs> honestly. Let's see what Riku does here. Oh yeah, you can kind of see down here where I point out that I don't like it where they immediately go for the combo. Riku has Magus of the Future, which is always a fun little guy. So that way he can uh, look and see what's coming up. Damia has been getting land screwed, and so she's not even in the equation at this point. We'll move the Magus box over there. So again, like I said, I'm going to try and... Oh, that's right. Uh, Momer cycled Slippery Karst, so he now has Teferi in hand. Uh, so he can flash Teferi out whenever he wants, but that's about it. Um, so I draw Vyashino Heretic, which doesn't really have any big targets out, so I'm just going to try and use the Conscripts to steal the Buse. Strip Mine is just a threat. I'm not really going to use it. I don't think I use it at all this game. Oh, there we go. And I managed to steal the Muse. 
So then I spread some of the damage out and I finally hit Damia. Now the interesting part is, uh, and I go ahead and sack Seedborn Muse, just before my turn, I had contacted Riku and I had said, hey man, you know, I sent him a little PM basically saying, if you leave me alone, I can go ahead and hit Momer pretty hard. And Riku's response was, well, why should I help you out since you've been hitting me? And I understand, you know, it's annoying. You gotta, you're gotta, you always looking out for number one, and it sucks when you're just getting pinged to death a little bit like that. But you also got to look at the bigger picture, and anytime you see a Momer player with Seedborn Muse, he's usually a big threat. So Riku helped me out by not attacking me or doing anything to my guys. So we're all good. And then I throw the Seedborn Muse at Damia. So everybody, Damia's going to be at 36, Momer's going to be at 31, and Riku's at 29, and I'm at 39. Momer flashes out to Fairy. And out comes Soul of the Harvest. Which is a fun one. Oh, and he draws Eternal Witness. And he comes after me with Teferi and Momer. That's fine, I understand. Now, again, I'm almost out of gas. I am out of gas. Uh, my next play is pretty much just going to be playing Martin. Luckily, he's going to have haste because of Eurobrask, and he's going to be able to uh, hit a little hard. Again, Momer's going to be my number one target. Um, I think Riku, Riku's got Rift sweep, Rift Sweeper. <laughs> Rift Sweeper on top of his great uh, library, and that's not very threatening. He's a, he's a little mana screwed, actually. I, I didn't notice this at first. He's only got one green mana. But he has Mystifying Maze to help him out on defense if he really wants. There we go. Journey of Discovery uh, for a couple other lands. And then think twice to go ahead and get copied so he can draw two more cards. Praetor's uh, Council and Echo Mage, I think. My good boy, DMX. Hey, look at Edge of Autumn actually came up and helped Damia out with uh, some land help. So she's at four lands now, has one of each color. She should be able to do something, hopefully. You know, she's drawn a bunch of cards. Um, so we'll see what happens. But there, since there's no real threatening artifacts out there, I think my play is just going to be to play Martin, attack try and beat down on uh, Momer, and again, uh, Riku was nice enough just to leave me alone so that I can keep beating down. I draw Fervor, which helps with my haste, uh, but I'm not going to cast it right now, obviously, with Eurobrask out there. And I go all out, he blocks Eurobrask and drops down to 19, and I play Relic of Progenitus. Now, one of the things that annoys me about the Relic is that I have to remember to actually tap him if I don't want to exile all graveyards. And you'll see that I just kind of forget. And what, what I'm really doing with the Relic is I don't really care overall about the individual cards out there. I just want to use it either to cycle and draw a card or to uh, wipe out graveyards in case somebody hits a regrowth or something like that. So... It's just something that I personally don't do. I know there's plenty of players that are like on top of those things and they get that stuff done. Um, I'm just too lazy. <laughs> and I think I was like watching Sports Center again or something. I don't know. But Momer has a, a big beefy dude in Soul of the Harvest and Teferi out there, so I expect to get hit pretty hard here. He plays Eternal Witness. Oh, draws Frexian Metamorph, draws a card. And gets, um, oh, hey, look, regrowth on top of his graveyard, and it's in his hand. Oh, he only attacks with Momer. That's right, which is interesting. He's keeping things back on defense, just in case. And what he did, that's right, he played Phyrexian Metamorph to take out Martin, um, which was a good play. You mean, I, I can still play Martin again next turn, but it's definitely going to slow me down. I don't have a lot of tokens. I don't have a lot of dudes. Um, Martin isn't really going to hit for a lot. Right now he's just uh, doing something to do in some, some kind of guy. Uh, Echo Mage comes out and I, he's going to make a copy of Echo Mage and like level one of them up. 
He's got Far Wanderings on top of his deck. <clears throat> it's interesting. I thought he would have played it, but he didn't. All right, Damia hits Temple of the False God and plays Life's Finale. So that's cool. I don't mind that. Um, you know, I can toss my dudes at people. Uh, it wipes the board of Soul of the Harvest into Fairy, which is cool. Uh, and Riku and Momer have to reset or get their commanders put away. Plus, it means that uh, the graveyards are going to be pretty fat. So he ends up targeting uh, Riku with Life's Finale, and I'll be honest, I have no idea what he throws in the graveyard. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't come up at all. Oh, look at me. I actually did use the relic on somebody. I used it on Damia. Because I think her graveyard was really small or something like that. And it would matter a little more. <coughs> Let's shrink these guys down just because I don't like it when they take up that much room. But plus... So I, I like to leave these guys out there, and they always end up covering something. And I forget, like, that Damia has Lightning Greaves or something like that. Just because I'm a bad Magic player. Well, he can get rid of Edge of Bottom. Hey, look, another land. So I'm going to go ahead and throw Vishino Heretic out there, equip him, equip him with the Greaves, and then see if anybody plays any sort of threatening artifacts. Hey, look, Seaborn Muse. That's what he... Uh, got out of his graveyard with Eternal Witness. <coughs> Riku plays Nim Death Mantle. That's semi-threatening. Oh, with Protean Hydra for two. I mean, the Death Mantle... I'm just gonna sit back and wait and see. Painful Quandary. I blow up the lightning creeps, because painful quandary means that he's turning into like sort of a um, a grief player. Uh, Damia is a griefer, and uh, nobody likes griefers. Painful quandary is a pain in the ass. I don't like it. So she's obviously going to be catching my wrath anytime it's possible. But right now I've got nothing. I know that Momer has regrowth in his in his hand. Therefore, I'm going to hold relic of progenitus uh, out just in case. Woodfall Primus comes out, takes out Painful Quandary. That's a nice play. And you know what? He takes, he took the five in order to pay the Primus. Uh, that works out well. I'm perfectly happy with that. And then he attacks Damia. I think everybody kind of sees what happens, you know, when when people play stuff like Painful Quandary, is all of a sudden they become the number one target. Damia has mana. Damia can start doing stuff. Go ahead and beat the crap out of her. I'm fine with that. <coughs> Riku's turn. He plays Rites of Flourishing. Hell yeah. Everybody's happy. Even me, I say nice. See? And then he attacks Momer. Momer's down. He sees blood in the water. Uyo, Silent Pop Prophet. I love Uyo. Uyo's freaking awesome. I'm pretty sure it's a dude. Is it a dude or it's a woman? I'm, no. Uyo's got to be a woman. I can never tell with the moon folk. People, like, st please, somebody tell me. Let me know. But she's got an awesome ability. I'm going to say it's a she. Explosive vegetation. to help ramp. And doubling cube. Nope, I don't like that. So, kaboom, by doubling cube. And then I make somebody else exile something. I draw two cards. One of them's Valakut. I'm very happy with that because I already have six mountains out. And I've got Pilgrim's Eye. I'm going to be able to play both Valakut and whatever uh, mountain I pull out. But I want to hold off until I can actually play two mountains on the same turn. Uh, my thinking at the time was that I want to be able to kill either Seedborn Muse or Uyo. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right play, honestly, but that was my thinking at the time. Interestingly, I haven't played Fervor yet, um, because I've been wanting to make sure I have mana for the Heretic up, and to be able to strip mine, and be able to high market stuff, uh, and kill things off if, I, if it's necessary. Hey, look, he tries to regrowth. I don't care what it is. Boom. There's the Relic of Progenitus coming into play. I think he was going to regrowth as Solemn Simulacrum, or something. Is that right? Oh, gosh, maybe he was. Whatever, I don't care. No card for you. And he was just doing it just to draw it out, probably. 
And I'm fine with losing my graveyard. I don't have a whole ton of recursion. I draw flying glaciers. Oh, hey, look. Duplicant takes out Uyo. Hey. And Duplicant is awesome food for Vyashino Heretic. Plus, Momer's already down to 14. And then he goes and he attacks two other guys. At this point, Damia's at 25. Rika's at 23. It's interesting, like, all of a sudden, because I didn't have any cards in play, and all I've got is the Heretic and a Pilgrim's Eye, people are just ignoring me now, which is awesome for Martin, because that way, you know, I, I did a little bit of pinging early on, and then I sit back and let everybody else kind of fight it out. Because obviously these other guys are way more powerful than Martin. And I take advantage of that. Uh, I make a little misplay here. I'm not paying attention. And Riku decides... Oh, he plays Rift Sweeper to get something back out of his graveyard. Oh, oh he, to get Uyo, that's right. Out from under duplicate. Actually, that's a pretty good play. Um, but what he does is he attacks the, with his Protean P Hydra after um, Momer. What I could have done was use the Heretic to blow, blow up the duplicate uh, prior to blockers being declared so that uh, essentially it would kill Momer right, right out. Is that right? No. He'd still be at four, but it doesn't matter. Um, to knock Momer down really far. But I don't actually blow up the duplicate until after the duplicate's blocked the Hydra. I'm dumb. I just wasn't... Oh, hey, Proteus Staff. That's something else to worry about. He uses Proteus Staff on Woodfall Prime. Oh, no. The Muse, that's right. And brings Oracle Mediah out. Seeing Draining Welk on top of the library. Okay, with Draining Welk, yeah. That's, uh... Obviously, he can't play it because he's, he doesn't have uh, Magus of the Future or Future Sight or anything. But at least it's another big fat counter spot I've got to worry about. Again, this is where I mess up. The Hydra goes after Momer. He blocks. I blow it up. It knocks him down to 18. Could have been at 4. Damia plays Reliquary Tower. Geth's Grimoire. Okay, so uh, the Grimoire means grief or deck for sure. Right? Siphon Mind. So I dump Fervor. Uh, I'm not sure if dumping Fervor was actually the right call at that point. I mean, giving all my dudes haste is always good. I could have dumped one of the mountain, or, or my mountain or something. Ah, I'm just not 100% sure. But that's what I did. And on top of that, three cards that he gets to draw. He gets to draw three more cards from the Grimoire. So, all of a sudden, Damia has a fat hand. Luckily, he had to kind of tap out in order to do all that. Plays Expedition Map. Another card favorite. Okay. I got Crucible Worlds. I've got Strip Mine. I'm not going to use it. Um, if I play Crucible of Worlds right now, everybody goes, holy crap, and either people start conceding, or I just get the beat down. And I'm not in a nearly strong enough position to try and pull that off at this point. So I'm just going to slow play it, uh, bring my Mauler out, and play my Glaciers. And I hit somebody. Oh, yeah. I, Damia's annoying, so uh, I hit Damia with my stuff, and I attack her with my creatures, knocking her down to 19. So again, I'm still at 32. Um, Riku's at 23. Damia's at 19. And Momer's at 8. Momer's got Spitting Image on top of the graveyard. And he just drew Draining Welk. So he can counter whatever comes out. And hopefully somebody else goes ahead and deals with that. I'm not too worried about Proteus Staff at, the point, at this point. I mean, I don't have anything that I really, really need out here. But it looks like the Momer still has uh, bad memories of stuff that Riku did. And uh, goes ahead and attacks Riku and um, Damia. Oh, and he doesn't get the untap because Seaborn Muse isn't out there anymore. There we go. Riku's going to replay. Oh. There comes Rico. Rico's going to come out and play. And that's Draining Walk. Oh, no, Hinder. Ooh, even better. Putting Riku at the bottom of the grave or library. And that draws some retaliation. Putting Momer down to four. Four. 
Vorinclex. Oh my god. Okay, Vorinclex has the possibility to completely change the shape of this game. Nobody likes Vorinclex. Um, I know people play him, and, you know, he's a mana reflection effect. But man, god, he's the king of grief. I mean, I hate that guy. Uh, I mean, I don't begrudge him being played, because he is just a creature, and it doesn't take that much to wipe a dude out, and, you know, Proteus Staff's still out there to handle him if it's really necessary. But luckily, Momer comes in to save the day. Oh, no, I, I remember, I blow up the Grimoire in response. That do, isn't really going to do a whole lot, but I do it just so that I don't have to worry about tapping. And then Draining Welt comes out, countering Vorinclex. That's a fun little play. So, then Domino plays Far Wanderings. And, you know, I'm going to hit Domino. Oh, no. I remember now. Momer's at four. And, you know, Momer, I really appreciated the fact that you countered Warrenclex, but I just can't have you hanging around any longer. <laughs> uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock you down to one. I'm going to bring out Martin, and I'm going to attack... Um, Damia, and then I'm probably going to see how things stand thereafter. There is a Lightning Greaves out there, so that's going to help Martin. And I'm pretty sure I go... Yeah, I do everybody against Damia and take her out, because that's freaking annoying. So Damia's gone. Oh no, she concedes, but she I had enough. I had 18, and she was at 13. So I'm, that was enough to take her out. And I've got, I can use Thawing Glaciers right now to bring one more mountain and take out Momer. So I basically just kind of clean up the mess. And then I play my Retriever just to have an extra guy, so that on the next turn, um, I can just beat down with Martin. For some reason, I put the Greaves on the Mauler, leaving Martin unprotected. I'm just realizing this right now. I don't have Greaves on Martin right now. There's a Proteus Staff still out there. And, oh, I remember, because I've got High Market. That's right. I was, I knew this. I, I would rather protect my big, fat Torian Mauler. Um, I could have sacrificed Martin in response to Proteus Staff, and then recast him again, putting the Greaves on him. That's right. I was like, why did I do that? God, I'm dumb. Uh, but luckily, it turned out, it turns out all right here. Uyo comes back out. And then I've, I draw Mere Battlesphere and Manic Vandal. That's game, unless he's got a counterspell or something else to protect him. Um, even without fervor, I blew. Oh yeah, I blew up the Nim Death Mantle, and then I strip mine the mist, uh, mystifying maze. That's the big thing that he was gonna use to help him. But the Greaves on the Battle Sphere concession. So I was gonna be attacking with all these guys and then tapping my mirror in order to pump the Battle Sphere. Um, so there you go, you know, uh, a little bit of early pinging, and then sitting back with um, not very many cards in hand, and taking advantage of people kind of beating up on each other. Seeing Damia come out as a late game threat, and taking her out was good. You know, I didn't really get any of my card draw in this game, but luckily the Rites of uh, Flourishing helped me out and get some extra um, cards. Uh, Rites of Flourishing can backfire, you know... It, it's good and it's bad. Uh, I didn't have any recursion really going on. It was just pretty much just sitting back and taking what was what I was drawing, essentially. If I really wanted to, I could have done Crucible of Worlds with um, strip mining multiple lands at each game, or two multiple lands a turn because the rights of flourishing was out, but I just didn't want to be that guy and it wasn't necessary. I did use the strip mine to take out his mystifying maze. But there you go. I mean, that's just Martin doing his thing. I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the game, and I will uh, talk to you guys soon.